Hi, Ben here. Today, I'm going to build on the previous two episodes. I'm pretty sure this won't make any sense to you if you haven't seen the first two, so please go and make sure you're up to speed. In the last episode, we simulated the infrared spectroscopy of water, and we generated this spectrum. I deliberately didn't talk in any detail about what the shape of the spectrum means or what these peaks correspond to, and that's because I was saving it for today's episode. As you can, I hope, clearly see, we have three peaks in this spectrum of water, and that's because we see three different types of molecular vibration for water. Today, I'm going to show you what these molecular vibrations look like, including how to make animated images for you to use in your next lesson or presentation. Before we start, we're going to need a few things. First, as I said before, I'm going to hope you've already got a folder where you've performed an ORCA calculation on water, and that you have all the output files that ORCA generates. The key ones we're going to use today are the water.hes and water.out files. Just in case you haven't, I've included a link to a GitHub repository with these files in. I'm also going to assume you already have ORCA installed. You will need it for this video. The other thing you'll need is JMOL. This is a brilliant piece of open source software. It runs using Java. I put the link in the description. Go ahead, download and install it now. Right, ready? The first thing we need to do is to tell Orca to generate the vibration files. And that's actually very straightforward. All we have to do is open up the command line again, or use the trick from last episode where you click on this to generate the address of the directory, control C copy, and then type in command line CD change directory, and then just paste in the address. And you'll know you've got it right because this address here will be the same as the address that's written here. Now, the command that we need to run is orca underscore plot vib, and then it's water.hes. Bear in mind that's the name of the .hes file, so if this is a different molecule you were looking at, or if you chose to use a different file name for your output, you'll have to make sure that that corresponds. And then simply type all. And then Orca will generate us a series of files, these .xyz files, and you'll see that they have water.hes dot and then a three digit number, which corresponds to the vibrational number. Now in order to know what vibrational number corresponds to what frequency, i.e. which vibrational number corresponds to which peak on the infrared spectrum, we're going to have to go back to our water.out file. If we open this up and we scroll down to where we see vibrational frequencies, which is near the bottom, you'll see that there are six frequencies here that have a null energy. That means we don't have to worry about them. We have to worry about these last three, because these we do see peaks for in the infrared spectrum, and those are vibrations 6, 7, and 8. Now to visualize these, we're going to open up JMOL. So if this is your first time opening JMOL, you need to run the .bat file in the install folder. Once you've got JMOL open though, it's very easy. We simply go to the directory, we look at the XYZ files. We're going to start with number 6, because that is the lowest energy uh, vibration according to the .out file. Just click and drag. We could also go um, to File and Open. Now if we have a look here, we can see that we've got our water molecule, but it's static. What we need to do to visualize the vibration is go to Tools, Atom Set Chooser, and then here we'll see confirmed the vibrational frequency. And here, where there's the vibration, we click this arrow in the middle. And that shows you what that vibration looks like. Now this is the lowest frequency vibration of water. This is known as the bend mode. Uh, and I think it looks like a little man having a party. This is quite useful uh, in terms of showing off how molecules vibrate. But if you want to export this as an image, simply go to File, Capture, Start Capturing, move to the directory in which you want to save it, and then give it a relevant name. So I'm going to call it 1643. And you'll notice this is a GIF file, which is an animated image file. If we hit Save, 
let it run for a few cycles and then if we right click again go to file and we hit capture we can hit uh, end capturing and then going back to our water directory we have a gif file here which we can open up and we see is a nice animated image which we can use in presentations or, or lessons now let's have a quick look at the other vibrational frequencies of water first off we'll just hit pause and we'll close this atom set chooser let's see how vibration 7 compares to vibration 6 so again we'll just click and drag this xyz file into jmol's window we're happy to replace that model and we'll see it resets the geometry Again, we have a nice water molecule, and if we go to Tools, Atom Set Chooser, and hit Play this time, take a note that this vibrational frequency here says 7, and then the vibrational frequency. If we just click Play, we'll see that here, rather than the bend mode from earlier, we have a stretch mode. And this specifically is a symmetric stretch mode, because both of the atoms are moving at the same time. Let's just capture this the same way. I'll move to the water directory and I'll name it after the frequency again so I don't forget the vibrational frequency of this mode. Hit save. Let it go for a few rounds. And then I'll hit end capturing. Just so I can double check, I've got another file that's appeared here corresponding. We'll just do that one last time. We'll drag in the uh, XYZ file for vibration number 8. Yes, we're happy to replace the current model. And now again, tools, atom set chooser, and we'll hit play. And again, we're seeing a vibration. Now this is another stretch vibration, but this time it's the asymmetric stretch vibration. And you'll notice here that it's a slightly higher energy than the symmetric stretch vibration. So again, I'm just going to capture this by going to File, Capture, Start Capturing, giving it a name relevant to the vibrational frequency, and then hitting Save. Let it cycle for a few times, just as before, and then go to File, Capture, End Capturing. So here we have all three vibrational modes of water. You can see that the bending mode is lower in energy than the stretching modes, and that the symmetric stretch is lower in energy than the asymmetric stretch. These are general rules of thumb, but I highly recommend you use the techniques I've taught you to see how other molecules vibrate and compare them to water. Maybe start with ammonia, but let your imagination run riot. You could also play around with JMOL to make a few more molecular movies. You could even post some of them on Twitter. I look forward to seeing what you peeps get up to. Until next time, have fun and stay curious.